Finance. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Financial Independence Podcast. Last time I read through one of my old posts and it seemed to go down really well, so I figured I'll do one more. And this one is on a similar topic as the last one, so I think it'll fit quite nicely. And the one I'm going to read today is The Power of Quitting. And this was originally written way back in 2014. And it talks about how I decided to leave my job to move back to Scotland with my Scottish wife. And the surprising thing that happened when I did hand in my resignation. So hope you enjoy this one. And I'll come back on at the end and give my feedback. Because a few of you reached out after last episode and said... Yeah, I really enjoyed listening to the old post, but it'd be great to hear your take on it now, considering, you know, it's now whatever, eight years later. And I thought that was a great idea. So I'll be back after this and hope you enjoy the power of quitting. I was nervous when I walked into the meeting room with my boss. Breaking up is never easy to do, even when it's you that's doing the breaking up. On my journey to financial independence, I sometimes dreamt about the day I would be able to walk into my boss's office and quit. On particularly bad days at work, I would think about all the things I would say, and that would help make the hard times easier to get through. As I sat there, though, chatting nervously about work, I mainly thought about the things that were good about my job. It's amazing how you're able to see something in a different light when you don't feel trapped by it. Yet another unadvertised benefit of pursuing FI, I guess. Finally, after enough procrastination, I just came out with it. I'm moving to Scotland. My boss was obviously shocked, but the words that came out of his mouth actually surprised me. Would you consider staying on remotely? Although I was surprised that this particular boss asked me to stay on, this is not the first time this has happened. I started my career in Scotland, and when my girlfriend, now wife, and I decided to move to the States, I handed in my resignation. Shortly after, I received an email asking if I'd stay on remotely at roughly a 20% higher pay rate. When I worked in Scotland, I would have had to beg and plead to squeeze out an extra 1% of my annual review, but here they were giving me a 20% bump to work in my boxers and a t-shirt. I obviously accepted and worked happily like that for over a year. This is not even the second time this has happened. I got my second job in my career through a technical recruiter in downtown Boston. After working with a particular client for a while, I asked the recruiting firm for a raise and they said they had to fight hard to get me a 4% increase. When I left Boston to move to Vermont, I was contacted by the client I worked for and was asked to work remotely full-time for over 50% more than I was making when I had to commute into the office every day. It gets even better. After working in a cabin in the woods of Vermont for a while, I started to go a bit crazy, so I decided to apply for a job at a university that was close by so that I could get a free Ivy League degree. When I told my Boston boss that I got another job, she instantly bumped my pay another 20% to try to persuade me to stay even longer. So why am I telling you this? I realize remote working may not be an option for all of you, but the important thing to take away from the story is that having the courage to quit provides opportunities that you may not even know exist. The best way to get that courage is to have enough money saved up to not need the job, even if for only a few months or years. When I worked at my Scotland job, I would have never imagined that one, remote working was possible, and two, I would be able to get a 20% raise. Had I just asked my bosses for either of those things, they would have laughed me out of the office. When confronting my bosses with the option of either going through the hiring process again and rolling the dice with someone new, or offering me a more attractive work arrangement to keep me on, it was a no-brainer for them. So how can you use this to get to fire quicker? You should work hard at your job, become a valuable employee, and then after a few years, apply for some other jobs. There's no risk in applying for a new job every once in a while, and only good things can come from it. You'll either find another job that pays more or is more enjoyable, or you could use that new job offer to negotiate better terms at your current job. Hey, it's the Mad Scientist from 2024 again. I hope you enjoyed that reading of The Power of Quitting. As I reflect back on this over eight years later, I think The Power of Quitting is even more important than I did back in 2014. As I've written about in years past, leaving your job completely is a whole other can of worms. And I think rather than racing to that finish line, thinking about how you can improve your current situation and your current job is way more important, I think, because one, you're not delaying your happiness. And if you are very unhappy at work, it makes a lot more sense to 
make your journey to financial independence a lot better by finding work that you do enjoy. And the best way to do that is from a position of strength. So if you have a current job, you're going to be so much more appealing to recruiters or to other managers, and you're likely going to get way more benefits if you do get an offer, because I feel like recruiters and managers can smell desperation. So if you're jobless, even if you do have a a big chunk of savings in the bank, they don't know that. So apply for more jobs from a position of strength. And instead of just focusing on getting rid of work completely, I think working your way into a job that you love is going to be way more fun and financially beneficial. So yes, realize the power of quitting and use it on your journey to FI. And hopefully you work yourself into a job that you don't even want to quit once you reach FI. And then you get the best of both worlds. A rewarding job, a purpose, colleagues that you enjoy hanging out with, and the financial stability to know that you don't need the job. And that's when you can actually really start to enjoy it. All right, thank you for listening, and I'll catch you in the next one. Finance.